Okay, this is chapter 10, lesson one. Um, it's our hands-on lesson, and so we'll be doing that virtually through either, um, what was the one that Mrs. Brew told us about, um, toy, toytheater.com, or um, actually our, our school curriculum um, virtual manipulatives are pretty helpful at this point too. So if you'll click on the icon when you go into your My Math, you'll click on manipulatives and you'll look for the term currency, which is a fancy word for money. Okay, that will get you to the actual money, the dollars and the cents. And then if you want work mats for tenths and hundredths, which are these, work mats for tenths and work mats for hundredths, um, you will go to the same place, but you'll go to backgrounds and you'll click on work mats and then you'll scroll pretty much all the way to the bottom to tenths and hundredths. So let's, um, let's work through this sample. So it says Kendra has one dollar, three dimes, and five pennies. Model this amount using a place value chart. So you know that one dollar is equal to how many cents? How many pennies is in a dollar? And we know that that's a hundred. Okay. So one dollar is one whole. So we write it in the ones place right there. One dime is one of ten equal parts of a dollar, right? Because it takes ten dimes to make a dollar. One ten, one of ten equal parts is one tenth. So one dime is one tenth, or there's your fraction, one tenth of a dollar. And Kendra has three dimes, so we're going to write a three in the tenths place. And one penny is one of a hundred equal parts of a dollar. One of one hundred equal parts is called one hundredth. And Kendra had five pennies. Five pennies. So we're going to write five in the hundredths place. The decimal that represents the amount of money Kendra has in dollars is a dollar and 35 cents. So let's turn our page over and look at the back. So we can use models to represent those decimals. And here we've got our square that's completely solid and that's our one, that's our one whole dollar. Here we have one tenth out of ten colored, so that's our one tenth. And over here we have one of a hundred, so that's 0 0.1 shaded. So let's try it. Maybe I should zoom out a little so we can keep that one in the picture. Okay. It says complete the place value chart that represents the fraction of the grid that is shaded at the right. So let's count them. There are a number of squares shaded at a total number of squares. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it's a perfect square. So this is 10 by 10. So there are 100 total squares. And how many are shaded? Well, let's count these by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, okay, I've counted all the columns, 40, and then we have 2. So there are 42 squares shaded out of the total 100. So when we say this in words, we say 42 hundredths. It's the same as 4 tenths and 2 hundredths, so you can see on the tenths chart, okay, these four solid bars um, correspond to all of these tiny boxes here. And then our two little loner guys right here are our two hundredths. So 
we write four tenths and two hundredths in the place value chart. Four tenths and two hundredths. We don't have any ones, so we'll put a zero. Okay? So let's talk about it. It says, Paulo has six dimes. Mark has six pennies. How many times greater is the value of six dimes compared to six pennies? Well, we know that if we have six pennies and we want to get to 60, dime, 60 cents or six dimes, because six dimes is 60, right? Then to do that, we're going to need to multiply by 10, aren't we? Because 6 times 10 is 60. So how many times greater is the value of the dimes? The dimes are 10 times greater. 